go. So a friendly reminder that every single day I post a lecture inside my AP Gov class. You will notice I have daily lectures two, daily lectures one. If you go to one, uh, week two, this is yesterday's. As you go through, ladies and gentlemen, throughout the whole course of the year, have you? Should you ever ask me, Bennett? I wasn't here yesterday. What did we do? Uh, because there's no reason to talk to me, and I say that with love, but like I only have so many words for other people a day, and I just, I just can't. So, with that being said, every single day I post on Canvas. So don't email me and say, Bennett, what did we do today? I, I literally did the thing. Don't ask me. Watch the video. Get the work. If I did pass out a paper in class, it'll always be posted in the module. So if you watch it and you're seeing I'm doing Marbury versus Madison and you weren't here, I post all of the paperwork inside Marbury versus Madison. I have people who have never stepped in my room this year who are doing all of my stuff online and they're killing the game. <laughs> I know this one chick, she's sick and she's just completing everything at home. Which is like wild to me. Never met her, but she's like cruising right along and like it's wild. Anyway, it works. Okay, tomorrow I am not here. I'm having surgery on my thumb. I will not be here. These are your instructions for tomorrow. Ben, it's not here today. You have the period to complete your assignments, your AP Gov. You have a focus, a vocab, a breakdown, two primaries, and one Supreme Court case is due officially tomorrow. Tomorrow in class, you're going to put your headphones on. Oh, in. Oh, in and on. I guess that works. And get to work. There's no talking. Just come in, sit down, and get to work. Um, tomorrow, I will have a copy of next week's focus um, over by my phone tomorrow. I'm printing it off today. I haven't gotten it back yet. Um, and you can grab next week's focus if you really want to get ahead. Is everyone clear? It's only two pages. Uh, one, two pages front and back. So significantly shorter. This is the biggest week of content. Um, so you should not be talking. You should not be wasting anyone's time. That is what the expectation is. Is everyone clear on that? On Thursday, when you come to class, I will be here. I will be back. Um, and you're taking a 25-question test on multiple choice. There's no reason to really talk about the formatting of the test because mm, you need to see it, and then we can have a discussion. Okay? All right. On your whiteboard. Here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is uh, the name of the three writers of the Declaration of Independence. Give me my three writers of the Declaration of Independence. In order, by the way, most to least. If you don't know the answer, you're more than welcome to look at your notes. Okay, I have no problem with you looking at your notes. Staring at me blankly, not okay. Then, you said last name, dude. Everyone else says last name, then you give me his first name. That makes no sense. Can I put it down to the first day? Yeah, of course. Good. Who are they? By the way, you do not have to give me first names. You can always just give me last names. Even on the AP exam, you can just write last names and everything scores. What do you got? Haley. Jefferson, Madison, Franklin. Jefferson, Madison, Franklin. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the body who commissioned the Declaration of Independence? Who commissioned? Electoral College and Popular Vote. On your whiteboard, please tell me what two elections do we use the popular vote in?
presidential elections on your whiteboard. What is it called when we send paperwork to state legislatures to be verified? What's the fancy term for it? When we send paperwork from the national to the states. Good. Tula. Ratification. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is... Uh, who are the two major contributors to the Constitution? Haley, I think you like this class better than anything we're all doing. I know who won. <laughs> Good. Who is it? Uh, Tori. Madison. Madison and Hamilton. On your whiteboard, please tell me what document is an enlightenment document that'll be mimicked in other countries. Good. What do we got, Anna? Declaration of Independence. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the what is Article Five in charge of? Good. Article 5 is all about what, Patrick? Amendment. Amendment. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what term am I describing? The government has power because the people allow it. Good. What do we got, Ellie? Popular sovereignty. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is the division of power between the states and the national government called? What is the division of power between the states and the national government? Good, Tori. Federation. Okay. Hi. We're gonna. I'm gonna finish teaching notes. I have very little to do, and then we'll get back to reviewing on the whiteboard. So don't put your boards far away. Hi. We did this wonderful thing in our first couple of days. You'd be an idiot not to look at your breakdown between now and your test on Thursday. Can we agree? Yes. So look at it. Look at it. It's actually really wonderful. I worked really hard on it. And you copied it down for a long time. Can we agree? So use it. It is a huge tool, uh, especially before Thursday. I would definitely look at it. It is super helpful. It's a basic framework that you need to have. All right. Mia, where do we leave off, girl? Um, we are on the federalist. And because I don't want to go over it, I think you're about to go on the Nice. Thank you, my darling. OK. So, Federalists, ladies and gentlemen, Federalists are pro-Constitution. They are anti-Bill of Rights because they think the states will take care of it. You need to know it's Madison and Hamilton are your two big ones, okay? You need to know they win, right? Because we have a Constitution, okay? Um, and then you have your anti-Federalists. That's your second grouping. Anti-Federalists. You need to know they're anti-Constitution. You need to know that they are fearful of a powerful central government. That's what they're actually scared of, ladies and gentlemen. They're fearful of a strong central government. Why are they so fearful, Alexander? Andrew, I'm so sorry. Andrew? Sorry, I have an Alexander sit there in first period. They don't want another monarchy. They don't want another monarchy, absolutely. It's simple. It keeps going down the same thing. We just won the uh, revolution. We don't want to have another war. Okay? So they're fearful of another central, of a, another king. Okay? And they want the Bill of Rights. They want the Bill of Rights. So they're obviously going to lose, but what do they get? They do get the Bill of Rights, and that's how we get anti federalists to sign on to and ratify the Constitution. All right. So, when we talk about the Constitution, there's a couple things you do need to know, okay? You can add it right underneath them, okay? It's called the Madison Model, the Madisonian Model or the Madison Model, okay? That's your next subheading is the Madison Model, okay? Because, ladies and gentlemen, when in doubt, when you're talking about the Constitution, who is it usually talking about? Madison. Madison's name is all over that Constitution. So, if you don't know what you're talking about, whose name should you throw out there? Madison. Only when you're talking about the Constitution, though. Okay? So, the Madisonian model is that he is trying to avoid the tyranny 
of the majority. Write it down. That's his big thing. He's all about avoiding the tyranny of the majority. Okay? So, how does he do it? He does it by limiting majority controls. Now, keep in mind, a majority is 51%. Has Congress ever been controlled by a party by over 51%? Yes, they have. Have they ever been controlled three quarters of a majority? No, no one's ever dominated, whether Republican or Democrat, ever held that much of your national council, of your national national legislatures. Never, ever. Okay, and the reason is, is because it's like a super majority, you can pass whatever you want. Now, state legislatures. Can you have three quarters and above in a state legislature? Yeah, here in uh, the state of Florida, uh, we have like 92% of our state legislature are Republicans. So, is there anything a Democrat can do when 92 out of 100 are Republicans? No, they can't do a damn thing. So, whether you love DeSantis or hate DeSantis, DeSantis can pass anything he wants because what is the state legislature going to do? Absolutely. Approve it, because there's no one to ch challenge them because they have a super majority. Congress has never been held by a super majority because the country is just way too vast and way too different. All right, anyway, separating powers. You need to know that by having each branch hold on to certain things. You need to know that he's about creating checks and balances. What document does he talk about creating checks and balances? I haven't taught you the document, but we wrote it on your breakdown, Luke. No. It's one of your tests. What is it, Ben Oliver, if you're snorting at his answer? He snorted his answer, and his answer was wrong, so you clearly know the answer. So what is the answer? It is not the Declaration. It's called Federalist 51. We don't laugh at people's wrong answers until you have all the answers, yes? Perfect. Federalist 51, write it down next to you. Uh, creating checks and balances. That's what Madison is really famous for. And then the federal system. What is a federal system? What is a federal system? Eve? There you go. States have certain powers. Central government has uh, certain powers. Write that down. State power, states have certain powers. Federal government has uh, certain powers. Okay, so what is something our federal government can do, but our states can't do, just in a big picture? Because we're gonna get to federalism in two weeks, but what is something that the federal government can do that states can't? Bronson? Federal government can declare war. A state cannot declare war. Absolutely, Mia? Yeah. Yes, printing money is a state thing, is a national government not a state thing. Perfect, that's good enough. We don't need a ton of examples. What is something a state can do that the federal government cannot? Eve? Um, education. education is one of the big things. So write down states control education. Okay. Uh, national government doesn't have really too big of a say. However, they've kind of manipulated the system uh, and they do have a pretty big say. We'll talk about how they do that though. They dangle money in front of states and they say, hey. We'll give you lots of money if you do this. But if you don't do this, we're going to take our money back. So what do states do? They yeah, they do it because they want the money. <laughs> so there is a little bit of a federal guidance on national education, but states do control a lot of it. All right. So is the Madisonian model going to pass or is it going to fail? It's going to pass. We have all these things, Bella. Because we call it the Constitution. Yeah, there's multiple of them. We don't need to know the multiple. You just need to know who's the backbone of the Constitution, ladies and gentlemen? Madison. So it's his plan that is going to be implemented and create the structures that we currently have today. Okay, so that's all you need to know. <laughs> okay, um, just a quick point. The Federalist Papers is kind of talked about, and it wouldn't be misplaced putting it under um, if you wanted to write it down. Um, the Federalist Papers are 85 essays. We're going to talk about six of them throughout the course of AP Gov. You need to know that they are written by Madison, Hamilton, and John Jay. I don't care if you forget John Jay. No one really cares about John Jay. Um, and you need to know that they're arguing pro-Constitution. That's the only thing you need to know about, right? Okay. For your Bill of Rights, 
you need to know it is added after ratification because they are what? They're amendments. So they're added after the effect, after the fact, because they're amendments. Okay? So they are added because who wanted them? Anti-Federalists wanted them. And in order to get anti-Federalists to ratify the Constitution, we gave them the first ten amendments, a.k.a. the Bill of Rights. That is all you need to know. Everything else I've covered in the way that we need to. Perfect. All right. What I would like you to do, take out your whiteboards. Here we go. So I have finished content. Content is done. I have done my part of getting you where you need to be. Your tests are not just from my lectures. They are from your focus, your vocab, your breakdown, your primaries, and your Supreme Court cases. Everyone clear on that? Okay, now, are you, have I covered everything I needed to? Absolutely, I double checked this morning and made sure I was clear. Uh, but, here we go, on your whiteboard, I want you to write down the following names in a list. You're just writing them straight down the side. Is everyone clear on that? Here we go. Madison. Hamilton. Jefferson. Adams. Okay, listen before I tell you what you're doing. Okay, thinking of only your documents that we've discussed in class. Okay, and these are the documents that you should be able to tie them to. Articles of Confederation, Constitution, Declaration. That's fine. And then Marbury versus Madison. I need you to tie those four men to as many of those five things as possible. Constitution, Declaration, Articles of Confederation, Marbury versus Madison, those four things. So tie those men to as many of those four documents that we've studied, go. Some of them are in multiple, some of them have multiple, keep that in mind. So, you're putting those men in the documents that we've discussed in Supreme Court cases. At any point, you can look at your notes. If you just think one person per, per each, you're doing it wrong. You should be writing the documents next to it. Drawing lines will not suffice because I don't think you understand how many are there. How many times these men keep popping up in these documents? You are more than welcome at any time, except on test days, obviously, to look at your notes and stuff like that in order to get an answer. I have no problem with that. I have a no, I have a big problem with not putting in any effort to figure out the problem. Do we see the difference? Okay, you got 10 seconds. Five. What I want you to do is I want you to turn to your neighbor and share your answers. I'm telling you, you're missing some. Go. Madison. When in doubt, who should you chuck out there? Madison. Madison. Here we go. All right, next one is who? Hamilton. Hamilton. Who can 
tell me where Hamilton is. Emerson, let's hear it, girl. Constitution. Constitution. He is in the article. What do you got? Actually, he's not in the articles. He's not in the articles. He is just in um, Constitution. He is just in the Constitution. Okay? Here we go. Uh, then we got what, Jefferson? Mm -hmm. All right, what do we got for Jefferson, Colin? He is in Marbury versus Madison. Without Jefferson winning the election, would it have been a big deal that Madison passed the Judiciary Act? Probably not. Madison would never have passed the Judiciary Act if Jefferson wasn't there. So he's definitely in Marbury versus Madison. And your final one is Adams. Where is Adams, Luke? Um, Marbury Articles of Confederation. Articles of Confederation, yes, sir. Okay, so those are your two major places. Not in the Declaration, because him and Thomas were not friends. <laughs> okay, uh, there you go. All right, make sure you know where your, your big players are. And when in doubt, who wrote it? Madison. Madison. If you, like, forget everything, you can always blame... Madison. Here we go. On your whiteboard, you can rinse it, wipe it, not rinse it, that'd be weird. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name. It's not till 1012. This period, I'm looking at my little sign, it's the second period. It goes to 1012, 924 to 1012, right? Yeah, like I'm not reading it wrong. Is there a lot of people outside? You're trying to get the hell out of my class? No, I was just finishing. Damn, Damn Haley. Working. On your whiteboard. Despite what Haley cares about, you're trapped here. On your whiteboard. What uh, vocab term am I describing, Haley? Modern, present day, 2023 Congress, because there are many groups who have strength causing ineffectiveness. What vocab term am I describing? Yeah, maybe you should be in the room. I see you, Haley. Good. Rinkus. There you go. On your whiteboard. What theory of government am I describing? Interest groups like companies compete in order to gain influence of government. Should we print it with a different What do we got? Ellie. Pluralist. What uh, foundation of government am I, de what type of government am I describing? It is ruled by the people. Direct democracy. This shit. <laughs> Direct doesn't exist, but representative of this does, and it's found in the U.S., Mexico, and Nigeria. What is it, Ryan? Yeah, oops, sorry. Uh, what type of government am I describing? There is no government, and it doesn't exist because another country would have taken it over. But what do we call it when no one exists? Sorry, anarchy. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is it called? What type of government is it called when it's ruled by a few? We see this in the aristocracy in the UK, and we also see it in theocracies like Iran. Nice. What do we got, Mary Bell? Oligarchy. oligarchy. I like oligarchy. It sounds fancy, right? We just casually throw in oligarchy in there. People are like, damn. On your whiteboard, please tell me. You heard him. Uh, what year is the Constitutional Convention? Constitutional Convention? Emerson, are you okay? Okay. What do you got, Estella? 1787. On your whiteboard, what year is the Constitution ratified? What year is it ratified, Luke? 1789. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what event in American history will begin turning people against the British in a major way that will lay the foundation for resentment and which will cause the American Revolution. What is the first event that starts changing our opinions? What do you got? Anna, Boston Massacre. On your whiteboard, please tell me what war will cause the British to increase taxes which will cause the American Revolution? You don't know. Look, I'm perfectly fine. It's all in your breakdown, by the way. What is it? What do you got, Tula? French, French and Indian War. On your whiteboard, please tell me. I came up with a good one, but then I forgot it. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Oh! Anti-Federalists are super concerned about too strong of what? 
Anti-Federalists are too concerned about what? Good. Jade. Central government. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is... Uh, please tell me. What is the... Name of the two biggest Federalists. Good. What do we got? Mary Bell. There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the most influential anti federalist. No. Jefferson is not an anti federalist. He's not even in the country. So stop writing Jefferson. Jefferson is only is one. No. No. He's a constitutionalist. Franklin, you, you don't know Ben Franklin that well that you just call him Franklin. Actually, that's fine. You can call him. But no, no, no. He's not an anti-federalist, dude. He's at the Constitutional Convention. Oh, okay. Go to your notes. We're going to write this down because no one got the answer here. Okay. By the way, if you go to your breakdown, Brutus. Is the most famous anti federalist because he wrote Brutus 1. Brutus is your most famous. It's on here. You're going to read Brutus next week, so don't worry. The excitement's coming. Uh, but in fact, it is not here yet. On your whiteboard, Marbury versus Madison gives us what power? Dun, 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 dun. Good. Eve's ready for Thursday. That's right, Heather. Sure. Eve, who is it? Judicial review. Judicial review. On your whiteboard, please tell me the fact that the Supreme Court can challenge the executive and legislative branch is a what? It's two words. I'm looking for two things. Good. It's a this and another thing. Good. Anna. Checks and balances. Checks and balances. On your whiteboard, what is a check? The executive branch can do to the legislative branch. Nice. Bronson. Veto. Veto. What is a check that the legislative branch can do to the executive? Yeah. Okay, there's two you could have written. One is impeach. Second one is override a veto. You can't just write override because that's just weird. Like, what does that mean? Override a veto, absolutely, is a uh, check and balance. Where does the vote not come from? Is it two thirds? Uh, it's three quarters. Three quarters. All right, here we go. Um, Because I'm, like, super excited about this, and I know you guys really don't care, but I was nice to you today, so there's no reason you should be hateful. So I'm just going to click through a couple of things, and you're going to tell me what it would be. I don't even have to come up with questions anymore. Oh, let's do this one, because you didn't know this a moment ago. So let's see if we learned anything within a moment. You forgot a T. How can you forget a T? That's not a T right there. Why am I so surprised? What is it, Sean? Brutus. Okay, here we go. Oh, no, we just did something like that. Oh, my God. Let's do this one. Good. What do we got? Uh, what do we got? Andrew. Article 3. Do, do, do. What is the division of powers between the state and the national government called? By the way, we will never have this much time to review, so I hope you're enjoying it. Are you? Yeah. Good practice. Bronson. Federation. Federation. Ooh, what's this one? Oh, we got a lot of long answers here. Ooh, your checks and balances, you were wrong. What is it, Rinkus? Uh, separation, of powers. separation of powers. Okay, what branch? We have three minutes. I'm looking. I know I will send you. I'm not trying to keep you here. God, who is it, Tori? Executive. Who's in charge here? God, who is it, Jade? Legislator. Legislator. And then let's just roll out the whole thing. Let's just do all three. Knock it out. Good. Mia. Ooh, what doc? Good. We got it, Anna. Declaration of Independence.
things that you should be looking at to study for your test because we have two more minutes, okay? You need to be looking at your focus. Everything on your test is either covered in the focus, the lecture, uh, vocab, and on the breakdown. Those are the four big things that you should be paying attention to. Lecture, focus, breakdown, vocab, okay? That is what I would tell you are the most important things to study. I am going to tell you the test is harder than you think. It is not basic recall. It is taking that information, looking at a situation, and applying it. But we can't really talk about how to study for it until you see it. Can we agree? So the best thing you can possibly do is be as prepared as you possibly can going into the test, and then we'll see where you fall. And then we can kind of give you tips and tricks to step forward. But unfortunately, if you think this is just I'm going to ask you, what, leg what article is the legislative branch created in your delusional? Now, are there a couple low-level questions? Of course. Got to help out my lowers. Uh, but no, it is not just lower-level questions. That is Thursday. Tomorrow you are by yourself. We are not together. And you will be amazing and get a wonderful review. And that way I'll be happy. Because if I'm cranky, you're cranky. And you don't want to see me cranky. What's up, Jay? You have literally 25 seconds. What do you mean for the test? You get the whole period. I collect all of your assignments. We do a do now. I collect all your assignments. Then you have the remainder of the period. What? You're not, because it's AP Gov, and it's kind of funny. It's a joke. No, you have 50 questions in like 75 minutes, which is insane. You don't get time. Because it's just, yeah, I know. Why do they make it so hard? I don't know in the AP world, but they do. Bye! About, People are leaving. What about comp? No, comp doesn't. It's the same, it's the same framework. It's the same framework of both.